All right, thank you for joining me for this part two of the, the video on uh, movement and support. So basically what I'll be doing here is to, to look at the movement and support in animals. So we have considered movement and support in plant in the first part of the video. Here we'll look at movement and support in animals. Okay, let's go. So the skeleton and supporting tissues in animals. Of course, skeleton is the bony framework which provides support for organisms. So there are two types of skeleton. We have the exoskeleton and um, the endoskeleton primarily. But in addition to that, we have also what you call the hydrostatic skeleton, which is made up of fluid that keeps the body turgid. This is primarily displayed in the earthworm. So you know for exoskeleton, it is um, the skeleton that provides um, support on the outer part of the body and it is found mostly in arthropods. So for the endoskeleton, it is inner supporting tissues and it is found mostly in vertebrates. So what are the functions? The skeleton plays numerous functions and one of them is to provide support for the body, to provide rigidity and shape for the body, to provide um, base for attachment of muscles. The bones also stores salt, notably calcium and um, phosphorus salt. Red blood cells of long bone marrows also produce, um, they are also produced in the um, red blood cells are produced in the long bone marrows, right? And of course, it, the, the skeleton protects important organs of the body. It enhances movement of the body. And in mammals, endoskeleton is divided into two. You have the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. So what constitutes the axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton? I'll show you this diagram. So the axial skeleton is the brain, uh, is the skull, sorry, and the chest, that's the rib and the sternum, and of course the vertebral colon, beginning from the neck down to the, the coccyx or the tail. On the other hand, appendicular skeleton would then be the other parts that is outside this axial skeleton. And that would mean the, the, um, the pectoral gedu or the shoulder gedu and the pelvic gedu on one hand. Then you have the forelimb, which makes up the, the arm and the hand. And of course the end limb, which is the leg and the foot. This constitutes the appendicular skeleton. Now let us take a closer look at, at the, the bones that makes up the, the vertebral colon. It's quite important. So there are about five group of bones that makes up the, the vertebral colon. Okay, so here we have the cervical vertebral. That's the first seven bones of the vertebral colon are called the cervical vertebra. Now, of this first seven, the first two, they are distinct from the remaining five. And the first one is called the atlas, that is immediately um, beneath the, the, the skull. And the second one is called the axis. So secondly, the second group of bones that makes up the vertebral colon are the thoracic vertebral. There are 12 of them in humans. And the, the, after that, you, then you talk about the lumbar vertebral. There are five bones that makes up the lumbar um, vertebral. And you have the, the sacra vertebral, which are five fused bones as well. On this is where the pelvic gedu um, 
is attached and you have the coccyx about four or three bones fused into the coccyx this in other animals is longer this is what forms the tail but in humans it is just three to four bones that fuse together to form the coccyx so that's those are the bones that makes up the vertebral colon now let us discuss the the appendicular skeleton like we mentioned that you have the pectoral gedu which is the shoulder gedu and of course the pelvic gedu you also have the forelimb the hand and the the fore um, the arm and the hand and of course you have the in limb that is the the leg and the foot let's talk about joints a joint is a point where two or more bones meet the joints are held together by a tissue called the ligament a joint is lubricated by the synovial fluid there are two types of joints and they are namely the fixed or immovable joints these are caused between the flattened bones of the skull for example and you have the social lines in the skull. Those are where flat bones are meeting. There is no form of movement taking place there. And for the movable joint, this permits certain degree of movement. There are two types of the movable joint. There are different types, sorry. You have the inch joint. For example, the elbow and the knee joint provides some form of movement up to 90 degree movement. You also have the ball and socket joint, for example, the hip and the shoulder joint. You also have the sliding or gliding joint, that's your wrist and your, your ankle. And then you have the, the pivot joint, which is the neck, where the atlas rotates on the odontoid process of the axis. So I haven't mentioned that. Let us then talk about the let's look at some of the bones that makes up the the appendicular skeleton and the the axial skeleton like we have mentioned that the first bone of the cervical vertebra is called the atlas this is what the atlas looks like and the second bone is the axis this is what the axis look like and it has this unique structure called the odontal process that fits into the the vertebral vertebral canal of the the axis to allow rotational movement of the head these are the bones of the thoracic vertebra the bones of the lumbar vertebra and the bones of the sacral vertebra here you have the bones of the appendicular skeleton different bones that makes up the appendicular skeleton so let's consider some questions as well on the um, supporting tissues in animals this question 27 says which of these is not true of the skeleton which of these is not true this is an interesting question number one the skeleton support the body and its associated structures that's true number two Option B, the skeleton, especially the long bones, give rise to red blood cells. Very true. The skeleton serves as structure for insertion of muscles. Very true. The skeleton, especially the skull and the rib, protect delicate structures within them. Very true. And E, none of the above. Which of the following is not true? Everything is true. So the answer is E, none of the above. So this is one um, occasion that none of the above can be the right answer. All right. Now, which of this is not an external skeleton? So external skeleton, you have the scales, the carapace, the carpals, the hoofs, and none of the above. Of course, the scales would be will constitute an external skeleton because they are outside the body 
uh, now the the carapace and um, the oof all these three are external skeleton so the right answer here will be the cup house remember the cup house are uh, internal skeleton that makes up they're part of the appendicular skeleton cup house in the in, the, the, the bones that makes up the hand the part of the bones in the hand is the cup out so the answer that to that question will be c which of these make up which of these make up the internal skeleton of an animal? Internal skeleton, bone and cartilage, ligament, water, elastin. Which of these makes up the internal skeleton? Of course, the answer to this question will be the bones and the, the cartilage. A will be the right answer. What type of skeleton has the earthworm? That is hydrostatic skeleton. The right answer is C. The next question, um, question 31. The difference between tendon and ligament is that option A, tendon join bones to muscle, while ligament join bone to bone. B, ligament join bone to muscle, while tendon join bone to bone. C, both are strong muscle fibers, but tendons are stronger. D. Ligaments are found in the hip bone, while tendons are found in the shoulder. So the right answer to this question is A. Um, so bone to bone are joined together by ligament. Let's see that. Bones to bone are joined together by ligament, and that is this. Why um, muscle to bone? are joined by tendon so the right answer is option a um let's look at this other question Let, let's look for questions on specifically on the bones okay question 35 which of the following is the correct order of the vertebra along the spinal column very good so you remember we have the cervical vertebra the thoracic vertebra we have the lumbar vertebra we have the um the sacra and the caudal vertebra so the first one is the atlas followed by the axis the first two um, cervical vertebra then the cervical vertebra itself followed by the thoracic vertebra followed by the sacral vertebra i mean the lumbar vertebra followed by the sacra and you have the caudal so the answer to this question will be C. Which of which vertebrae has a projection called the odontoid process? And that is the axis, right? The scapula and ischium are part of what part of the appendicular skeleton? Okay, I've just given the answer. Question 37. So um i just said the scapula and the ischium are part of the a pectoral gedu b pelvic gedu c appendicular skeleton d in limb the answer is appendicular skeleton so the pectoral and pelvic are part of the appendicular skeleton the pectoral gedu has the scapula why ischium is present in the pelvic gedu so both of them are part of the appendicular skeleton another question 90 i mean question 38 here says the function of the zagai prophysis is what a free movement of the bones support of the internal organs protection of the spinal cord articulation of successful vertebrae so the function is to articulate successful vertebrae you have what you call the pre and post zagipophysis which articulate successive vertebrae to allow the bending movement and prevent the rotational movement in the vertebral colon okay on that note i think we have considered good amount of questions you can 
solve as many questions you find in the book and um i'll see you in the next video where we'll be looking at the the next topic in the jam syllabus please like the like my the video comment and share let me get your feedback and let's know what we need to do differently and also as the jam exam is approaching i think i would um in my next when i finish the next two topics we are going to look at general revision of 50 questions instead of taking another so i would pause my series and then take a look at general revision for the exam for the jam exam because the exam is fast approaching so i'll see you in the next video thank you bye